Hi everyone, it's Rohan this side and it's pretty much frustrating to upload this video over here because this kind of things I personally hate it when I'm not able to get the trickiest part from the question and this is exactly the example for the same where I can explain you that what are the common type of mistakes that you can expect for this type of question okay where I was also a trap of this I don't know what happened with me but yeah whatever it is it's right in front of you in question 10 part C coming from the 9709 that is the Cambridge Mathematics paper 1 variant 2 from the October number 2024 session in question 10 part C I have committed a small mistake it's not really small to be honest I don't really want to talk about it but yes I have committed a mistake over here so for that thanks for this particular user who has mentioned that uh, according to the marking scheme in question 10 part C function is decreasing so I went and checked over here then uh, it was indeed a decreasing function initially I thought that there is some kind of a problem in the marking scheme but it turned out to be that there was a problem in my head. So yeah, I'm very sorry about this, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and explain the specific part in this video. So yes, let's get started. All right, guys, so here is a quick recommendation before I actually go ahead and explain you my mistake. If you haven't watched the actual video where I have committed this mistake, please click on the I button that will be popping up somewhere over here and go to that original video, scroll till the very end, and you're going to get the actual question 10 part C, how I've solved it over there. If you are able to identify the mistake right over there, you can comment it that this is the correct way to solve it. And I appreciate that. But let's see if even you are thinking that what I've solved over there is correct, then come back in this video and try to see that why it is not correct. Okay. This is called as a better practice where you will be understanding that what are the common traps and how you can avoid this kind of common traps once you know that, yeah, these kind of things do exist. Okay, guys. So, yeah, if in future CA guys are going to trap you, you will be safe. All right. Now, just to have a quick recap, I'm not going to tell you how to solve question 10A and 10B over here. Again, for that, you can watch the original video because these parts are correct. But just to have a quick recap to understand parts in a much more better way, it is given that a function f with the domain x greater than 0, it's such that the derivative of this function is this equation. And it is given that the curve with the equation y is equal to f of x. Basically, if I integrate this, I'm going to get f of x. It's going to pass to the point 1 comma 0. Now, based on this information, the part C was mentioning that it is given that the derivative of the function that is given to us in the previous page, if I set this equal to 0, then I can form a quadratic equation, which is going to look like this. I'll also show you how you can form this quadratic equation in a while. The main question in part C was to determine making our reasoning clear that whether f is an increasing function, decreasing function or neither of it. Okay. So initially what we have done is I thought that uh, this equation is very similar to what we have written over here. That is equal to 0, that is equal to 0 and on the left hand side there is f dash x. So I just thought that I can say that this is your f dash x and that's the biggest mistake that I have committed. I assume that this quadratic expression is exactly like what I am having over here. It's just the playing of the words by the Cambridge guys. Okay, this is not correct. And this is the mistake that we have committed. Okay, we are going to form this equation only if you make your derivative equal to zero, not for any time this is going to be true. So if I just go ahead and show it to you um, over here. Okay, so if I just say that this is equal to zero over here, I can shift my 10x to the power of 2 by 3 on the right hand side so that this negative becomes positive. And from that part, we'll try to help you understand that only for that part, I can convert this into a quadratic and not for any values of the uh, f dash x. Okay. So to start with, I'm going to say that it is 8 times 2x minus 3 to the power of 1 by 3 uh, minus 10x to the power, of, sorry, it's equal to 10x to the power of 2 by 3. Now, if you see that 1 by 3 and over here 2 by 3, 1 by 3 is common. So I can take cube on both the sides so that I can get rid with the 1 by 3 term. So if I take cube on both the sides, 8 cube I guess is 256, but I'll still check it in my KLC. So just a second, there's something wrong with my KLC, I guess. Okay, never mind. 8 cube comes out to be, okay, 512, not 256, my bad. 512 times 2x minus 3 to the power of 1 by 3. If I take the cube, I'm done with this 1 by 3 and into 3. So I'm just left with 2x minus 3 power and this is equal to 10x to the power of 2 by 3 and it's whole cubed, right? So 10 cube is going to be 1000 and x to the power of 2 by 3 multiplied in the power by 1 by uh, uh, 3 into 1 by 3 will cancel out each other 
and I'll be left with x square. Okay, I hope it's making sense. X power of 2 by 3 if I'm cubing it, then this 3 and 1 by 3 over here gets cancelled out and I'm just left with square. Now, after this, if you just uh, rearrange this equation and divide everything by 8, you are going to end up with 125 x squared minus 128 x plus 192 is equal to 0. Okay, so this equation will be converted into this form only and only if I equate my f dash x is equal to 0. In no way, this question is stating that this expression can be written directly in the format of this quadratic. It is only true when I am solving for f dash x is equal to 0. So that with the help of this, I can get the stationary point. Because to find if your f is an increasing, decreasing or neither, we first need to know what is the turning point. Because from the turning point, we need to know that, okay, uh, we'll be having an idea that if something is increasing or decreasing. So for example, let's say there is a curve like this. So what, what's happening for the values of x over here, the curve is decreasing. Then for the values of x from here to here, the curve is increasing. Then again, it is decreasing for this part, then again increasing, then again decreasing. So only with the help of turning points, we are able to make this kind of decisions. So based on that, we are given this result so that you don't have to do this initial steps, guys, okay? So that you don't have to do this initial steps, they have done it already for you, that if my f dash x was equal to zero, what will be my stationary points? And based on the stationary points, you can tell that for what values of x, it will be increasing or decreasing, okay? This kind of things will only make sense if you have gone through the concept of increasing or decreasing functions. But yeah, that's the case. So if I just have to give you a quick recap that if, uh, if I have to prove that a given function is an increasing function or not, it basically is telling for what values of x, your f dash x is greater than zero. So for those values of x, your original function will be an increasing function. Similarly, for the decreasing function, for what values of x in the actual curve, your f dash x is less than zero. So for those values of x in the original function, I can say that it is decreasing. So let's say for example, this part, so this values of x I'll be getting if I solve f dash x less than zero. And not only this, I'll also get this as a solution, also this as the solution. Because for all of these x's values, I can see that my f dash x will be uh, less than zero. And similarly, I'll be getting this values of x and this values of x for the increasing function. So in the same function, it could be increasing plus decreasing, all right. And for the stationary points, it, they are just the points, okay. For this specific value of x, that is a turning point. So neither basically means that you are just having two values of x. There are no such values of x for which your graph is always increasing or decreasing. They are just the stationary points. That is what we get to know over here with the neither part, right. So over here, that was the whole question. I have clarified my mistake. My mistake was, I thought that my f dash x is directly over here. So I, I took this f dash x and proved that this is always an increasing function by first converting it into a completing square. And then I saw, I, I just proved that everything over here is greater than zero. So if my f dash x is greater than zero, my f of x is an increasing function. So this was true only and only if they had mentioned that this is exactly your f of f dash x. For all values of x, this is your f dash x. But this is not the case. Okay, this is not the case. And now I'm going to tell you how you're going to solve this question correctly. So now that we know that uh, 125 x square minus 128 x plus 192 is actually your, what do you call this? Equation for the stationary points, what I'm going to do is, um, I hope my Kelsey is not displayed on the screen right now. Okay, yeah, it's not, great. What I'll do is I'll just uh, take another color and come over here. Okay, so for turning points or the stationary points, what I like to call them, turning points, your f dash x equal to zero. And if you do this, in that process, you're going to get this equation, which is 125 x squared minus 128 x plus 192 is equal to zero, okay? Now, if I solve this equation and I get two real values of x, I'll know that both of these are the turning points of the original equation. But then in this case, if you go ahead and try to solve this, you're going to get a complex numbers in the output, okay? 
So let's say if I'm going to say that my A is equals to 125, my B is equals to minus 128, and my C is equals to 192. And then if I'm using my X is equals to minus B plus minus square root of B square minus 4AC, and then I divide this by 2A, you can directly use the Kelsey and substitute these values, and you will be seeing that you are getting imaginary values. So X comes out to be imaginary values. So what does it indicate? This is basically indicating that there are no stationary points. Okay, there are no stationary points. For stationary points to exist, X must be some kind of a real value. And over here, that is not the case. So we are saying that this implements, this implements, there are no turning points. There are no turning points. So now what to do next? So because there are no turning points, a function will always either keep on decreasing or it, it will always keep on increasing. Because there is no turning point, so it couldn't be that if I'm increasing some part and then after some part it is going to decrease. That is never going to happen because of this thing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take my original derivative function that is given to us in the question. And if I'm remembering it correctly, it was given that given f dash x is equal to 8 times 2x minus 3 to the power of 1 by 3 minus uh, 10x to the power of 2 by 3. Let me check. Um, 8 to x. Yeah, it is correct. So over here, given that this is the actual thing, if I substitute any positive value, because in my domain, you know that x is a positive value. So if I substitute any positive value, my f dash x is going to tell me what is the sign of my f dash x. Is it positive or negative? So based on the previous thing that there are no turning points. So from this, you can also make one more conclusion. This means that this means your function is always increasing or decreasing. And we know that if f dash x is coming out to be negative, then it's a decreasing. If it is coming out to be positive, it is increasing. So I just need to plug any values from my domain in this f dash x. So let's say if I'm choosing f dash of, let's say any positive value, let me choose 10. So if I put 10 over here and I take out my Kelsey now, so it is 8 times 2 times 10 is 20 minus 3. And if I do power of 1 by 3 now, and then minus 10, oops, minus 10 is not on the top, but it's on the bottom. And then x value is again 10 to the power of 2 by 3. Then this must come out to be negative 25.845. It must come out to be negative because I know that from the marking scheme, it was a decreasing function. So we expect a negative value. But yeah, over here, indeed, we are getting a negative value minus 25.8 something, right? Minus 25.8. So now what does this suggest? It's suggesting us that this implements as f dash x is negative in given domain for x greater than 0 is same as writing in a given domain and there are no turning points and there are no turning points this indicates f is a decreasing function. So yes, guys, that is how you actually solve this question. I hope that the mistake that I had committed is now pretty much clear to you all. And trust me, guys, I will solve ample amount of questions like this. But maybe because I was tired or something, I was not able to get this right away. And there is no way like, you know, I can keep on being frustrated and not do anything about this. Or there is an alternate thing that I learned from my mistakes and make sure that I, I try not to repeat them. Right. And that is exactly what I'm doing right now. Moving on from the mistake that I've committed. And I'll just ensure that this kind of mistakes won't happen in the future. That is the way of progressing in life. And that is what I exactly recommended. Uh, I recommend it to all of you. That is, if you are committing some mistake, own up to it and just make sure this doesn't repeat. And that is how you're going to progress in your life. 
so with this being said guys thank you so much for uh viewing this whole video over here and i hope it is making some sense in case of any additional doubts please make sure to comment them i know that it's pretty simple solution if you look into it but yeah let's say if you are solving this kind of things at the very end of the paper your mind is going to be pretty much exhausted and i'm sure that a lot of people must have committed this kind of an error as well so yes guys that's about this video